Dr. Wood, author of the book, Miracles and Minutes. And today's video segment is keeping the main thing, the main thing. What does that mean? Well, if you want to be successful in life, you have to clearly define what it is you want. <laughs> and it needs to be very clear. Like, ah, I want to be in a relationship. That's a general statement. That's missing a lot of something I call facets. Okay? So let me under help you understand this concept. When you get a diamond, okay, and you look at the diamond, that's the main thing, you look inside the diamond, and each diamond has facets. Different little nuances that come together that make up the diamond. Every human being is a human being. I'm Joe Wood. There's many facets that come together to make up who I am. The same with you. So when we define I want a great relationship, if you don't have the facets laid out, you can't get there. Because <laughs> it's a general statement. It's like I want to go on vacation. Got it. Where? Vacation. <laughs> they're, they're, this is not clear. Do you understand how that's not clear to yourself or to your mind? So as a leader, what does a leader do? What does a coach do? They create the vision. They create the main thing. And it starts at the core of who you are. I'll go over a couple little books here. Someone gave me this book right here called Traction. Okay, It's a great business book. I'm a naughty boy. I didn't finish reading it. You can see I got so far. <laughs> but <clears throat> it talks about creating anything in life. You have to clearly define it. So... As a doctor of chiropractic and, and my book, Miracles and Minutes, as a clinician of 21 years, here's what I see happens when patients come in. They don't even have the main thing down of why they're here. I just want to get out of pain. That's not a very good goal. Okay? Even if it was the goal, what happens is a lot of people get addicted to a way of getting there. <clears throat> so, for example, let's suppose um, the goal is to find gold. Okay, and here and 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 I and all I think is all I gotta do is go mining. So I'm gonna go in my bathtub and just start digging. And I think if I dig long enough, I'll probably find gold in the bathtub. See, digging's how you find gold, Doctor Wood. Like, I got that digging's there. But the question, are you digging in the right spot? <laughs> and I say this because we're all, we all get kind of silly. We get caught up in our heads and we lose focus of the main thing is what is this goal? Okay, so let's talk about health, okay? I'm going to give you fitness as an example, okay? So <clears throat> I, I, go, I go to the gym probably three to six, seven times a week, okay? I do something every day. Because I invest in myself every day to keep my body, I take care of myself. Whether it's stretching, whether it's meditation, whether it's deep breathing, doing something. Okay, something. Okay. So the main thing is I know that for me to live a great life, I need to be healthy. Okay, what does that mean? Well, to me is I want to have a lot of energy. I want to be vibrant. I want, my, I want to have clear thinking. I want to be relaxed. Relaxed like how? I just want to be comfortable in my body, almost like... You know, things are coming at me in life, and I'm unshakable, I'm unmovable, I'm okay with that. I'm always calm within myself. I'm, I'm joyous, I'm happy inside about being alive today. Um, I, I have lots of energy. I, when I go to the gym, I, I, I'm willing to try new things. I, I'm a, exploratory, I'm inquisitive. Um, I, have, I have pep in my step. My voice is articulate. Oh, it resonates. You know, energy. That's to me. It's healthy. I want to be able to be in human relationships and play and have fun and and laugh and smile. See that to me. That's health. I want. That's health. If I have this thing, this thing called health, energy, vibrance, spring in my step, walking tall, feeling good inside and outside. To me, that's health. See, see how clear it starts to become. That's the main thing. That's the main thing. Now, that's the main thing, okay? Clearly defined goal, that's health. Now there's facets to it. 
Maybe today I'll do some kettlebell training. Maybe another, well, so I need some um, strength endurance. That, that would go into health. That's one aspect of health. Maybe uh, I'm not very flexible. Okay, so if I can't move and my muscles are tight, uh, that I wouldn't have spring in my step. Did I put anything, did I invest anything in this facet, flexibility? So there's kettlebell trainings here. That's going to give me metabolic conditioning and power strength training and power development. And then there's flexibility, okay? Well, what about breathing? Who cares if you breathe? Well, no, breathing pulls all this together. Maybe I'll do some breathing exercises in there. Maybe I'll isolate one, keep the main thing. Like this is where I haven't done any investing is kettlebell training. Maybe I'll do that for a while maybe a week or two or something like that. Then I'll go and tag into my flexibility for a little bit. Maybe then I'll go and do breathing for a little bit, or maybe I'll blend all these together. What's the right way, Dr. Wood? Whatever gets me to my goal. See, if you don't measure if you're getting closer to your goal or not, what happens is we become addicted to only, let's suppose I'm a runner. Well, what do you do? All I do is run. I run three miles every day. How long have you been doing this? About six years now. Like, like that's, that's all you do? What happens is you get stuck in a mental rut. In actuality, the studies show it's not actually healthy even though you're doing that because you become habitual. See, if you get too habitual, you get tied into that and then you can't get out of it. You don't have the ability to float up on top of your brain and go in all these other categories and have laterality in life. It makes you inflexible mentally and physically. If all you do is one way of training, there's many facets to go into health. Wouldn't breathing go into that? What about flexibility? Yoga, Tai Chi, something like that, a meditative movement. Kettlebell training, maybe I'll go do some strength training. Maybe I'll go hit the bench press, maybe I'll do deadlifts, maybe do a Wendler program, 531. Well, I don't like doing strength training, that's dangerous. Look who said so. If you get the right coach, it doesn't matter. Now, if you have joint issues, you need to go take care of those. Maybe you need rehabilitation for a while. I need to rehab some stuff, lay off some of the things that are causing me to cause myself more problems so I can get help. But when you only focus on just doing your, you know, the strength training and it's causing you to blow your shoulder out, that's kind of stupid in the end because then you don't have a shoulder. You got the bench press, you always want it, but now you don't have a shoulder the rest of your life. So, you know, like this is, goes into facets. Like, what do I need to work on to achieve the main thing, the goal of being healthy? What, it, what clearly defined, write it out. What is this goal? Can you visualize it? Draw a picture. Do you know that there's a book called, called The Back of a Napkin? And if you draw a picture, you understand things quicker? Do you know if you're trying to explain things to your kids or if you're conducting a business meeting, if you draw it out in a picture, a picture's worth how many words? The mind doesn't think in words anyway. It thinks in pictures, in symbols. So when you draw the picture, even if you're not, you know, Pablo Picasso, people catch on. They actually, it's a better way of communicating large concepts fast. That's why I, my little sketches here, I do some things, okay? Now I'll cover another book here, okay? It's called The Spirit of Kazan, okay? It just talks about creating lasting excellence one small step at a time. So let's suppose you're really overweight. That looks like you're going to chunk off an elephant. And what happens is it becomes so overwhelming to the mind, you're like, this is too big. But if you chop it down to the little things, it becomes easy. You know, can you, what are you doing right now? I eat a candy bar every day. Okay, well, can we substitute the candy bar with a protein bar? See that one small change. Actually, I used that strategy with one girl that I, I knew, and she lost 300 pounds in three years. One small thing. I don't see how that one little thing of that candy bar to protein bar made that much of a difference. It does. Those small things. So I'm teaching you how to conquer life, how to overcome huge hurdles, hurdles how to accomplish things in your life. And I'm going to cover one more concept, okay? And the concept is <clears throat> multitasking, okay? So people are using my glass over here. Like, well, I'm working on this part of my life and, and this part too. So what happens is you're really busy all the time and you're tired 
But you know what happens in the in the long run? You know what you accomplish? Nothing. Nothing. But uh, you, then you go back to doing this. I'm working on this one. I'm working on that one. If you look at all successful people, what they'll do is they'll they'll get rid of all the bullshit, and they focus on one thing, and they stay with it until it's done. Till it's done. Give you another example of that. Bruce Lee said this. <laughs> I'm not afraid the guy knows 10,000 kicks. I'm afraid the guy who's practiced one kick, one kick, 10,000 times. See, if you understand that in life, you want to win. Let's suppose I, I wanted to teach you how to fight. Do you want to spend 20 years learning 30 punches? Or do you just need to know something, one thing, that'll help you succeed. If I taught you, if you had this one punch that you could just <laughs> execute with precision, with power, it was your go-to punch, and you're fighting someone else who's trying to do all this bullshit, da, 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 and you're really good at this one thing, I'd put my, my money on you because <laughs> you're really good at that one thing. <laughs> and they're semi-good at a bunch of little things. If you're really good at one thing, that's all you need. I say this because people are making their lives too goddamn complicated. If you want to be successful, if you want to achieve great things, focus on one thing. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. But as you're staying with the one thing, there may be many little facets that make up that one great punch. Maybe it's your breathing. Maybe it's your shoulder turn. Maybe it's this. It's maybe your foot position. That would go into that one punch. So you'd work and drill the little facets of it. And then you always still have to do this. After you've been focused on the one thing, life always requires this of everything. You have to let it go. It's a pendulum. You focus on the one thing, you're over there, and then you have to drop it, let it go, and go to the other side. I'll give you a quick example. So I was in chiropractic school. I'm taking 26 credit hours per quarter. You know, I go to get up in the morning, I go to school, I'm in school all day, da, 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 school, I come home, da, 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 da. I'm in school, I'm reading, I'm studying all night long. Oh my God, my head, it's, I mean, I'm on the one thing, but eventually I'm like, oh, I'm getting a little fried. So this is biochemistry, this is spinal anatomy, this is da, 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 da. I'm like, oh shit. And none of these things are crossing over. Like I can't, this one subject doesn't help, you know, anatomy's not helping me with the biochemistry. The biochemistry is separate, distinct from this one. So I can't, like this class crosses over. It's like they're, they're different. My head's on fire. So what did I do when I would come home? I'd watch cartoons. <laughs> I'd watch Bugs Bunny. How far away is Bugs Bunny from biochemistry? It's way the other end of the spectrum. It allows my brain to relax and recover so I can go back to my one thing of studying. Okay, it's Dr. Wood, fallacies of multitasking, it doesn't work. You don't accomplish shit, but you're really busy. You won't get anywhere in life, but you're busy. It's called busyness. What's the one thing? What's it clearly defined as? I want to be in a great relationship. What's that mean? What's that sound like? What's that look like? I come home. We have great time. We laugh. We have the ability to address. I mean, will conflict come up? Oh, okay. So we have to learn how to deal with conflict. Do we know how to negotiate? Do we know how to forgive? See, in a great relationship, forgiveness has to be there. See, to have the laughing, the fun, the giggling, the smiling, and having a good time, there's going to be times when you're not laughing, you're going to disagree. So to go back to the laughing thing, can you forgive? Can you negotiate? Can you deal with conflict? Can you uh, speak in assertive communications, or are you going to go passive-aggressive? If you go passive-aggressive, you're not going to have the great relationship. So in the great relationship, to find out, you have to have all these facets and skills to get there. Dr. Wood, hope this explains main thing, facets, and getting it done. Thanks a lot.